Welcome back to Sports Federation TV, the show where we continuously showcase all codes of sport who are members of, of the SASCOG body. Brought to you by the Western Cape Provincial Sport Confederation. My name is Alton Davids. We continue our conversation about the times and lives of some of the celebrities and some of the people involved in badminton in Cape Town who have just celebrated their 95th year of existence. In terms of, in terms of equipment, because generally one would assume that the equipment was kind of standard. Was that the case? So everybody played with, uh, on an even kill. You, but everybody had non-marking sole shoes. Everybody had a, and then it wasn't carbon. It was a composite racket of sorts. Um, yes, those days it was the, the wooden racket, the Dunlop. Mm. And uh, we were forced, especially when we played in Langa, uh, those days you were compelled to play in white only. White mm -hmm. sand shoes, white socks, the ladies' white underwear, white skirts, shorts and skirts. Mm -hmm. And when we used to, to go to Langa and play there, they only had two rackets for the whole team. Sure. They had two sh uh, uh, white skirts, two white sh shorts for the boys, and they had to go to the toilet to change. To swap clothing. Yes, so that if it is my chance to play, I go to the, uh, to the toilet, undress, uh, put on my whites, and then come and play. Sure. And that is how we develop sport. Mm. Um, and, and, yeah. and, and in many cases, it's still like that in the, in the smaller communities. Even though in the metro, we want to think that everybody's on the equal footing. In the rural areas, the, the, that same challenge still exists today, unfortunately, Dr. Jumpy. It, it does, especially in Google Letter. Mm. You find that um, they, uh, the people have difficulty getting to the wall. And you find that people in, in our community uh, has difficulty going there. Mm. A, an area that is making name for itself is Ocean view. You find that um, I would say about sixty percent of their players become Springboks. Is it? Yeah. We we had two of them on the show a while ago. Um, a young, eighteen-year-old young man, who I now believe is has has finished third or is ranked third in the country at this point in time. Can't remember his name, but I, I agree with you. How how is how is has the, how has the sport changed over time? Um, we know that there's a court. The court size doesn't change. The net height doesn't change. A the, the the rackets have changed from from a wooden racket to a composite aluminium to now a, a full carbon racket, which is up to three thousand rand just for the racket. How how is how has the sport changed in terms of of the way we we see things? From I mean, you're still actively involved. You're the vice president of of Western Plus Badminton. How has that our sport changed? Now that things are amalgamated, now that South Africa is one, uh, we've won the World Cup. How how is how has your sport changed for the positive as a result of of, of, of the transition we've been through? Uh, positive in which sense? Positive uh, in, in, in terms of, 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 of a competition, um, and yes it's inclusive, but more in terms of the, the level of competition and the integration. Um, and how is this how 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 well, how, how much growth is happening in your sport? Ocean View is a typical example as a, as a new club that's come into your sport and is, and is making a, uh, inroads and waves. Kalicha is another example. How are we growing? How has sport developed in, in badminton over time? Yes, uh, if we take Ocean View, Ocean View is over 20 years old now. Mm. The suburb? The players itself. Okay. And there's this one gentleman, Francois, who's a fisherman. And he is the main person behind the level and standard of badminton. And that's why I, I always say to myself, it cannot be that Ocean View people eat fish. That's why they're so good in <laughs> badminton. <laughs> <laughs> it's because of the, the, the coach. He, 
he's, he's an excellent coach, and as I said, a number of his players become Springboks. Mm. Um, junior Springboks, two of them has now traveled overseas already this year. Um, so he, uh, but what, what I'm saying, there is a quite an, an, an improvement in the quality of badminton. Mm. What was interesting for me at your awards this past weekend was they were exactly what you're saying. There was a, a, an array of, of, of A nationalities, B cultures and creeds and everybody socialized with everybody. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's, and it happens in a lot of codes of sport, but I could see it particularly at your awards. There was no, no, no one shied away from anybody. Everybody had conversation with everybody you could see. Um, yes, the clubs were, were, were seated at their tables, but everybody got up and spoke to everybody around that room, which is which is symbolic of what you're saying that badminton has become an, uh, and, and like other codes of sport, it's very inclusive, and and there's no barriers other than potentially prejudice in term or, or a prejudice the wrong word, um, fear for, for for safety that they choose not to go into your example Google Earth or Ocean View, yeah. but but when they're together, there's that sense of unity and that sense of let's grow the sport. Yeah. There is a respect for f for one thing, your quality of badminton, your mm. stand of badminton, and also your behavior on court. Mm. So, um, yes, badminton has done much to bring about that change mm. uh, amongst people. Dr. Jump is in, in closing. G give me, give me a, a few reasons why are you still involved in badminton after 50 years? I mean, I think it is uh, my profession, first of all, mm. having been a, a, a teacher and also principal of high school, mm. and also my profession now as a psychologist. I see the, the good in people as a psychologist. Um, and also having been the coach of, of a number of Western province teams myself. Mm. Um, and of course, the, the interest of, 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 of the players amongst themselves, mm. that keeps me going, and that keeps the interest of badminton going for me. Mm. Because there is a great future for not only the sport, but for the country itself, and yeah, I'm referring person to person. Mm. And as you just mentioned, uh, in the past years we would refer to dance, uh, the the boer can do like a dance, they could dance, all the dance, they fast up. Yeah. Now, if the music goes on, everybody moves in. For sure. And uh, there's there's no difference whether it's fast up or or a, a tango, or a, 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 a waltz. Everybody involves, mm. becomes involved. And no white person will have a problem dancing with me with my color. Mm. And that I think that is one major positive of badminton. Why would I want to play badminton? What has it done for you as, as Charles Jumpies? How has it changed your life? And and and. And and the and the view that you have on, on 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 sport and on people in general, you you've spoken about the fact that you were a teacher, principal, psychologist. How how, how why would I want to play sport? As an individual. I think first of all you must be a sports person. And then uh, uh, the fact that um, you as a person are interested in people themselves, mm. just wanting to be with people. Um, and that st starts from the cradle. Mm. Like my daughter, Sarah, she was brought to the badminton court by my wife and I in the cradle. And she would lie there and play with the badminton, uh, with the shuttlecock. Mm. And now she's 27 and she's still playing the game. For sure, for sure. You see, so it's the love of the game that will bring us. Definitely. Dr. Jumpes is a typical example of a process called long-term participant development. From cradle to grave, you participate in sport, long life activity, 
longevity, mental stability, not that you're unstable. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll question that at a different time. Yeah. But the fact that sport has changed people's lives over time positively, taken them to places they've never been before and changed their lives and the people around them. Dr. Jumpies, thank you for giving us a little bit of insight into into the life, into your life and into badminton's growth thus far. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. This was a privilege. Thank you. Thank you. Let's take an ad break. We'll be right back. See you now. <laughs>